Yeah, and so you might find yourself saying, why? Why am I looking at a picture of corn? Why am I looking at garlic? What's going on here? I thought this is a substance designer tutorial. Where have I gone wrong? You've gone nowhere wrong. This is a substance designer tutorial. Um, there's a reason we're looking at these things. Corn, jackfruit, garlic, giraffe. All of these guys feature a Voronoi diagram. This is a pattern you're going to use all the time. Look at your skin that's on your skin, where your skin cells grow into each other. Um, walk into a forest, lay on your back. I recommend it. Look up at the trees where the trees meet. The canopy also forms a Voronoi diagram. And what this is really is just think about it like scattering a bunch of points on a plane. And then these just grow out until they contact another cell that's growing into it and where they intersect. You're going to get this line here. Pretty sweet. So this is everywhere in nature. We make a lot of stuff that's in nature. So you're going to find it a lot. A hallmark of this design is that any area in this cell is closer to its seed than any other seed. It's sort of an interesting kind of part about the Voronoi noise. We're going to talk about how to make a better version of this in Substance Designer. You have some options for making it from scratch. You have Cells 4, which everyone probably knows. It's the guy from the thumbnail. You also have the Voronoi noise node now, which is cool. It's a lot more functionality to it than the regular Cells 4. I'm going to show you how to actually make one of these from scratch because there's some cool things you can do that expand on the functionality of even the Voronoi noise in a way to make it a lot more custom. So let's get to the graph. So here's the thumbnail guy. This is cells four. And this is a Voronoi pattern. It's just like the diagram you're we looking at. You can zoom in and out of this, get more of them, play with the disorder. You have a bunch of options, do some cool stuff with it. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that they're all f like within the ballpark of being the same size as each other. There's none that are like way bigger than any of the other cells or any that are like way smaller. They're sort of in this kind of comfortable middle where they're all, you know, plus or minus 30% bigger or smaller than one another. But it's pretty cool. You'll use this a lot. You'll run this thing through like an edge detect to start cracks. A lot of the time we've done that in previous tutorial. Like I said, nature, you're going to use this pattern a lot. You also have a Voronoi noise. So you can come down. You could keep these Gaussian like this, but you could switch the style to random color and it behaves a lot like a cells four. but you have some additional options now. For instance, you can stretch them in one direction, in any direction you'd like. Same thing, you can scale out disorder, which is a lot like the previous one, but you can do disorder in specific axes, which is kind of nice. You have some distortion, which I, I tend to prefer to warp these after the fact. The really cool thing about these nodes is being able to switch um, the distance mode using something like Manhattan um, or using Minkowski. Minkowski number of one is Manhattan, but as you lower this number, this is the P number in the Voronoi diagram, you can change the, the way this looks. So this is pretty cool and it expands on the cells, but I'd like to show you how to just make one yourself because there might be times where neither of these get you what you want and you want to do something really specific. So like I said, the, a good way to think about this is just like spreading a bunch of seeds out onto a plane and letting them grow into each other. So instead of the sampler, actually, let's use a tile generator first. So I'm just going to make these be a little seed. So I made a square. We'll shrink them way down. Give them some random position and color. So we'll scatter them around. So this is me. I threw my handful of tree seeds out into the plains. We're going to grow a forest. I gave myself some random luminance. And then we just need these guys to grow into each other. So. We'll use a distance node, like we've done in our tutorial on our cells, like our flood fill tutorial, it's up here. So ordinarily you put this into mask and you can see as I increase the distance, they grow into each other, which is cool, but they're all white right now. If we plug in our random grayscale into the source and it's nicer if we have a fully white version plugged into mask. There's our cells four. All right, we've just grown these plot points out until they've met another neighboring plot point growing out. And so now you can control this by you know lowering the amount in X, lowering the amount in Y, giving ourselves more of them. Random position would be a disorder. The closer you get to zero, the more it's just a grid. Pretty cool.
Same problem as cells four really in Voronoi to an extension. Well, like I said, these are all but the same size plus or minus 30%, give or take. If we wanted some of these to be a lot bigger than others, what we really need to have happen is on this grid, have some areas where there's less dense seeds. Right now, like, and it's just okay, we'll have a larger discussion about randomness in designer at some point soon. But really the issue with this and why they're all the same size is for the most part, even though we have a ton of random position here, on in on balance, like these are all fairly close to each other. There's none where it's like, hey, this quarter of the texture has like none, very few. It's all evenly spread for the most part. It's even more obvious if you have a lot of these. The more of these you have, the more you're like, it's just kind of evenly dense. We don't have an area where there's very few or where there's a lot more than normal. It's just kind of an even spread. And that results in an evenly sized spread of cells here. So to fix this, we really need an area that's less dense. We can't do that with the tile generator very easily. Very easy with the tile sampler. We'll have a big video on the tile, various tile generation methods at some point. But essentially the tile sampler allows you to drive a ton of different attributes on the tile generator with a texture instead. So we could drive their scale via texture or their color or whether they're spawned or not via a texture as opposed to a slider. So I'll size these down. And we'll, we don't need as many of them. We'll say like give us 12 or 12, 12 and 12. Position random, color random. I might shrink them a little bit more. You can, if you want, have these be a single pixel. That's all you really need. I'm just not doing, I, I normally do this. The reason I'm not doing right now is because it's hard for you to see. So I'm keeping it just the normal size mode and putting the scale really low just so you all can see the actual seeds. You don't have to just imagine where they are like I do. <laughs> So we'll do the same thing and we get our similar result. So we could just say, turn up the mask random. And what this does is basically do a coin flip. At 0.5, it's definitely a coin flip. It's just saying, hey, half of these should be called out in aggregate because essentially for every spawn point, it's flipping a coin. On heads, I'll show the square. On tails, it'll be black. So the issue is this doesn't feel very random either. It's a bit better, but the more we have, the less random it feels, right? Because if you flip three quarters in a row, you could get heads three times in a row. Absolutely could happen. I don't even think the chances are that low, right? But if you flipped, you know, 10,000 quarters, you're gonna approach closer to 5,000 heads and 5,000 tails. So this actually suffers from the fact that the more of them we have, the less random it looks which is interesting. What we need instead is a texture to drive where some should be, where some shouldn't be. That's our mask map input. So I'm gonna drive a cloud into this. Now you can do a couple things here. You can just go down to the color rollout and go to mask map threshold. This just determines what value in this texture, at which point you should stop spawning if they're under. And you see if you do this, now, in the areas where we have these big empty black spaces, because we have varying density now, right? So where we have big empty black spaces, and then we have some areas that are really densely packed, that's where we have the small ones, and we have the big ones in those empty voids. And this is really interesting, because it creates a lot of variation in the noise. That's really helpful for just, like anytime you can do this in designer, right? By complicating the way something looks at a base level before you even blend this in, generally is helpful. If you're trying to do cracks or something, I would expect there to be kind of smaller pieces and larger pieces, not for, the, not for them all to be totally uniform. You can control it with that mask uh, map slider, or you could just set it to 50 and use a levels on this to change it as well. It's up to you. But this is really neat. You can really expand on how cool this looks by just changing what goes into here. For instance, if I had a tile generator, and we set these to squares. We probably don't need that many. I'll give us like eight and make them really, really small. So the dots can really only exist in this fairly narrow band like that. This is also a really interesting result. 
right? They're much wider than they are tall. Because again, we have these big voids alternating with d densely packed areas. It's really cool. And you get really silly with this. Put in something like a disc. So we're going to have a really tightly packed area. And then nothing. Which is cool stuff like this. And you can actually blend between various ones if you wanted to. So I could say, put these, I don't need the mask, I need the mask map on full. I'm gonna make another one of these, make a bigger shape. And there's a smarter way of doing this. You could just make it so they're tied together, but for the, for expediency's sake, we won't do that this time. I'll subtract here. And I'll make a second ring where they're much less common. We'll have a lot fewer. Or alternatively, instead we'll just turn our mask random up way more. So now we have these two rings, if we add these together, one that's very dense, and then it gets less dense as it goes out. And then we get some really cool stuff, like really small, then they get a bit bigger, and then they're huge. And this is a really good spot to start something like a crack. If you're doing like shattered glass, a decal for like shattered glass or a crater of some sort, whatever. Good way to start it. You didn't have to do a bunch of messing around. It's just like, whatever, these 10 nodes. And you get a pretty cool result. So anyway, this is a fast one. I think it will help. I always find this really nice. Again, like I said, anytime you can break up a more frequently used like even density of noise into something that already at its base has a bit more interest in it, I think it carries through really nicely into the rest of the texture. Um, so just a reminder to everyone, try this out for sure. Um, like I said, look at garlic, go into the forest, look up, I recommend it. Subscribe, like the video, uh, tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see. I got that big list going. I'm sure there'll be lots more of this, but this is a quick one. Moving on to Vector Warp soon. The video is in the works as we speak.